Hey, yo, everyone, Andrew here, bringing you another video, and today we're going to be talking about Boston Comic Con. Yes, for those of you that don't know, or did not know, Boston Comic Con was, well, for me, yesterday, August 4th, but it was actually August 3rd to August 4th, and I thought, hey, I went to Boston Comic Con, might as well sit down, talk to you guys about what went down who I met, uh, what happened in my overall experience with this con, and where it stacks up with all the other cons I've gone to. And the only cons I've really gone to are Boston Comic Con, but I've been to about four or five of them so far, I think. So let's begin. Um, so originally the plan was, is uh, my buddies and I, my friend Jonathan, my friend Marco, uh, my fiance, uh, and two other people were going to go with us to Boston Comic Con. Uh, we were all going to dress up as something. I was going to go as Red Hood. My buddy was going to go as Question. My other buddy was going to go as uh, Bane. My fiance was going to go as Supergirl, so on and so forth. Uh, but we, uh, but a few things happened. One is uh, I work every other Saturday. So I had it planned out perfectly. The Saturday that Comic Con was happening, I had off. However, there, something happened, I, I forget exactly what, it was a couple of months ago, where I switched Saturdays with someone. I think someone called in sick, whatever, so I switched Saturdays, and I guess I had to work the Saturday of Boston Comic Con, which I did. I was absolutely heartbroken. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be able to go the day of, and all my friends are going to go before me, and, oh, and I hope I don't miss people. Because there were going to be some big celebrities at Boston Comic Con. So, I worked. And then I got out of work and I started calling everyone up. I'm like, hey, listen, I know it's last minute. Can you go to Boston? Oh, you can't. Hey, listen. Oh, you can't. Hey, Boston Comic Oh, you can't. No one could go with me to Boston Comic Con. And the only person that said they could found out that they had something they had to do the next day. So they couldn't. And my fiance was adamant about not going because it was like... We, I was going to get up at 7 in the morning, and she's not a morning person. She did go with me, though, so I didn't go alone, but I would have. Anywho. Uh, so, Sunday, Boston Comic Con. There was going to be some big names there. Uh, first and foremost was Scott Snyder, the writer of Batman. Uh, Tony Daniel, artist, writer on various different Batman and DC comics. Uh, the legendary George Perez. Uh, artists on comics like Crisis on Infinite Earths, Wonder Woman, Teen Titans, Superman Avengers, so on and so forth. Uh, Dan DiDio, you know. Um, and then uh, also Brian Azzarella. I had a brain freeze. I'm working off like four, four hours of sleep. And Brian Azzarella, who also is writing Wonder Woman right now. So it uh, has some big name people for me to go see. I was pumped. I'm like, I gotta go see these people. I gotta go see them now. Uh, so, when we got there, I said, first thing we're doing, write to Scott Snyder's booth. If he's out there, he's out there. I'm gonna go there. And uh, I went to Scott Snyder's booth, and uh, he wasn't there, but someone was handing out tickets. She's like, well, this is what we're doing. We're, we're handing out tickets to people. Uh, one ticket is for you to get your signature uh, for anything you want to sign, uh, and we call those out. And then, um, the other, sign the other tickets are for the panel that he's doing at 4 o'clock. And I said, I'll take a ticket for that, and I'll take a ticket for that. So we took the tickets, and we're like, well, she said, Scott Snyder's gonna be not going to be out till 11 o'clock. And we got there at 10, and we're like, okay, we have an hour to kill. Let's see if we can find someone else and get their signatures. Walked around instantaneously, I saw George Perez. The little schoolgirl in me go, oh, George Perez! So I went over there, got in line instantaneously, and... Uh, he was handing out tickets, too. And George Perez had a, a really kind of a cool way of doing how he was signing stuff. Uh, he would hand you a ticket, or his little helper would hand you a ticket. Little helper. He wasn't really little. But uh, his assistant would hand you a ticket. And you could go off and walk around and do whatever. And if you came back and your ticket was already called, you could place it down, skip ahead of everyone else, and, you know, assume the place that you should have been. And that was a cool thing. But um, at the same time, people were walking off and people that were far ahead of them were getting stuff signed. So I'm like, maybe if I stay in line long enough, I'll just get to him by natural attrition. I'll just eventually hit him. Um, lo and behold, when we get to the very front of the line, they call out the numbers for Scott Snyder. They said, 
Uh, numbers for Scott Snyder between 246 and 259. Please come to the, the booth. And I'm like, I gotta go there. But I looked at my fiance, I'm like, we're so close, we can just get his signature now. Uh, even though we could have walked away and been fine. I'm like, here. I'll take your phone, because she has an iPhone, so she, she can take pictures. And that's how we took pictures. Uh, and I'll give you my phone, which is a crap phone. I'm going to be getting an iPhone sometime. My warranty or contract expires. Um, right before my wedding. Best wedding gift to myself. So anyways, I said, here, you take my phone, text your phone if you need anything. I'll keep your phone for picture if I need to. Uh, the second she goes over there, she texts me. Hun, your number's next. I just went, what? I dropped everything at the George Perez booth, and I just fucking dashed. I just went there, and I sat there, and I whipped out my comics that I was going to get signed by Scott Snyder. And there's four comics I got to get signed. So I'll tell you what they are after I tell the Scott Snyder aspect of my story. So I got up there, and uh, they called my number, and, like, I, 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 this is, sounds silly, but I poured my heart out to Scott Snyder. I just gave him my comics and I shaked his hand and I said, listen, I want to just let you know, like, you are awesome. What you've been doing in Batman has been amazing. He's like, oh, thank you. I'm like, no, I, I really want you to realize, like, I love what you're doing, how you're taking the character, how you're treating him, everything you're doing is just awesome. Uh, Swamp Thing, I wasn't going to read it until you talked about it, and now I, I can't put his comic down. Uh, I love it. Like, really, I have to say, I appreciate your work. It's amazing. And I said, do you, do you mind if I get a picture? And he said, yeah, you, you can get a picture. And I'll, I'll show you the picture um, uh, right here, I guess. And um, after I did the picture, I'm like, like I, I just want to let you know, like, you were the main event for me here. Like, to see you, you're the reason why I paid the X amount of money to come in. And, like, I just wanted to see you and tell you thank you and how amazing you are. And he just said, oh, that's cool. Hey, hey, do you want to see something? I'm like, I'm not allowed to show this to people, but, like, do you want to see it? And in my head, in my head, I'm thinking, yes, God's that. I, I, I want to see that amazing thing that you're not showing other people, which he might have been showing other people, but no one else I talked to said that they saw it. So I might be the only one. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I'll see it. But what came out of my mouth, I'm like, yes. So I walked over and he showed me this off his phone. And he's like, yeah, this is what we're doing for zero year. And this is what we're going to do here. And we're going to do that, too. I just looked at him like, oh, my God, I, I just, I, that's awesome. I like how you're doing that. And I, I promised him I wouldn't tell him, uh, people. But to prove to you guys that he actually showed me something that's going to be showing up, I'll give you a hint. And once you realize the hint, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. And I'm going to point it out to you uh, when the issue comes out. going to be like, bitches, this is what I was talking about. Uh, it has something to do with Batman back in the Golden Age. And it has to do with the color purple. Okay? Uh, purple is part of it. Uh, and you'll realize what I mean when it comes out. Again, when the issue comes out, I can go... Bitches! And I'm actually going to do that. Bitches! But, um, he showed me it, and it was awesome. And like I said, I don't know if he showed anyone else. He probably did. But, um, it was really cool that he showed it to me. I asked other people, and they're like, no, he didn't show me anything. He didn't show me anything either. I'm like, oh, maybe he didn't show anyone else's. So, uh, that happened, and I'm like, listen, again, I really do appreciate what you did. He's like, listen, uh, you know, it, it's, it's people like you, why I do what I do. I love doing it. Thank you for coming. And uh, I have to say, Scott Snyder, just honestly, and I didn't really tell you everything he said to me, like how he would respond to what I said, but he is honestly the nicest guy you'll meet in comic books. He's so genuine and he's so nice. And I'm so happy I got to meet him. It was like the highlight. And you know, it was a highlight because afterwards my, my hands were shaking. This never happens to me because I never get nervous. My hands were shaking afterwards. I was all red. I was actually smiles face to face, like ear to ear. My, my fiance, who was kind of moody the day because she just didn't want to get up early. She just looked at me and she smiled. She's like, you're really happy. I'm like, oh my God, yes. It was like a fucking 14-year-old meeting up with Justin Bieber. It was like, oh my God. So I did get four things signed by him. Um, I got Batman issue number one, which as you can see the signature there. This was a must-get. I got uh, my favorite cover for Batman so far. 
um, which is Batman issue number two variant. And uh, the signature is right there in the bat signal. So uh, next time I meet Jim Lee, and my mission is to meet him again, I got my Hush stuff signed by him over there, um, is to get this cover signed because it is my all-time favorite cover. It's just so badass. Um, I got Swamp Thing issue number one signed by him, which is right there because it's Swamp Thing. And I got uh, The Wake issue number one signed by him. So uh, because I've, you know The Wake has just been really fun, really good, really different. And it's just been something I've been enjoying. So, uh, like I said, the highlight of it was to meet Scott Snyder, but it wasn't done yet. No, um, after Scott Snyder, um, I went right back to the George Perez booth. And I'm like, what number are you? And they said, oh, we're at number blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm like 40 numbers off. But I was still, like, second in line. And it's just people kept on coming back and getting their the things done. So, I'm like, oh, Whatever, I'll, I'll walk around and see if I can find some other people. Still, still Tony Daniel, still Brian Azzarello, still Dan DiDio. Fine. I didn't find Brian Azzarello at all. I think he just didn't show up that day. So, unfortunately, I didn't get Wonder Woman number one signed. And that was sad. Uh, and Dan DiDio went to Salem. I la later found out that he went with his fiance to Salem when I went to the Scott Snyder panel. Um, so, wait, and eventually I hit... Um, Tony Daniel, and I'm, I was a little thrown off, I'm like, hey, what's up, because he was, uh, he was, like, right out in the open, I just didn't see him, and I said to him, like, hey, listen, I'm a huge fan of your art, I really do like what you're doing, um, and I'll tell you a scene that's one of my favorite scenes, like, there was a scene where Dick Grayson was, you know, standing next to Catwoman, they were talking, and they were at the pool, and Catwoman was in beta suit, and Dick Grayson was in whatever, and, you know, it, it was just a really cool scene, and, um, you know, I really love your art, and I really love what you do, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I like that scene, too, like, I really liked how Catwoman's hat was pushing against his head and all that, and I'm like, yeah, that was really cool, I'm like, listen, continue doing what you're doing, because, it, you know, I love watching, and he was also a genuinely nice guy, um, and, Took a picture with me, which I'll show here. And uh, I got only one comic signed by him, but it was uh, Detective Comics issue number one. And uh, this is pretty much complete because he was writer and artist on it. Um, sorry, I paused it because I, I wanted to go find that particular panel, but I forget what story it was it from. Anyways, um... So yeah, and I also talked to him about uh, how I loved how he draw Dick Grayson as Batman, and uh, how he said he he would love to do that again, but not gonna happen. So anyways, I met him and went back to the George Perez booth, still waiting in line. Uh, nothing. Uh, went out, got got some food, walked around the show for a bit, came back to George Perez. Finally, my turn. I uh, sat. I I got there and I talked to him beforehand, but. Like, when I got to him, I, and I, I actually got things said, I, I I was a little starstruck, maybe, because this is George Perez. He's one of my artistic idols. Uh, Jim Lee may be my favorite artist, but George Perez is the one that I think has inspired me with me drawing. I'm not a good drawer, but I, I like to draw. And uh, his technique is just great, and he's been the artist on two of my favorite runs of all time. So it was amazing. So I was like, uh, hi... <laughs> I gave him the comics, and I got them signed, and I'm like, can I please get a picture with you? And so I got a picture with him, which I'll, I'll show. And and uh, afterwards, I'm like, listen, I, I'm, I, I just want to let you know you, you're one of my favorite artists of all time. You've done fantastic stuff. It's like a huge honor to meet you. And he said, yeah, thank you. <laughs> He, he, it was very great to see, meet him. Really nice guy. Very genuine guy, too. Um, and I got signed by him was uh, New Teen Titans issue number one. Uh, Wonder Woman 80s series issue number one, which he wrote and was the artist on. And finally, Superman New 52 issue number one, which uh, he was the writer and was the signature artist down here. Um, and the cover drawer on it. So I got those. And uh, 
After that, my fiance and I went out and we, we walked around Boston for a bit. We came back for the Scott Snyder show. Uh, the Scott Snyder show was great. It was only like an hour or so, but uh, he sat down. He talked about a lot of stuff he wanted to do for Zero Year. Spoiled a few things with Zero Year. Told us some of the stuff he changed in uh, Death of the Family for the, the trade because he did change some stuff. Uh, he said, oh, it's great that Dan isn't here because I can spoil stuff and he doesn't wind me back. He told us that after Zero Year, there's going to be like a small three-chapter story. Which is going to be a cold case, and then, like, the biggest story he's ever done, which, you know, he says that with everything, but still. And he said, like, a lot of cool stuff, like how he's he's honored to be on Batman, that uh, the reason why he does such big stories on Batman is because when he teaches at the college that he teaches at, he tells people, write the story that you would want to pick up, the be-all, end-all story. And then he says, whenever I write a story, I want it to be a story that I want to pick up, the be-all, end-all story. And that's why he said, like, you know, if I have nothing left for Superman, which could be soon. I'm not going to tell it. I'm going to move aside and let someone else do it. I'm not going to just go with emotions on a title. I'm going to tell epic stories that mean something to me. And then when it's it's done, it's done. And he, he went into the meaning of how year one meant for him. And it was really kind of cool. And uh, he answered a lot of questions. I, I didn't get my question answered, but... It did kind of get answered. Like, I didn't get to ask it, but someone else asked it. And I uh, and I was going to ask, where, uh, do you have any plans for Hush? But someone said, is Tommy, Tommy Elliott going to be in Zero Year? And he said, no, but you watch out for Thomas Elliott. He's going to be in New 52 in 2014 in a huge way. So that's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, that, that, was, that was Boston Comic Con. And it was the best Boston Comic Con I've been to. I met... Uh, Three amazing people. Scott Snyder, you know, just an awesome guy. Just an awesome guy. A few of you people came out to me. I, I felt bad for one of you. One of you came out to me while getting tickets for Scott Snyder. And I I, I was working on, like, four hours sleep. And I forgot to get your name. But uh, really, it was really nice to meet the few people that came up and talked to me. Uh, it was It's great to see you guys who watch my video. And I am so... Um, privileged to have you guys watch my videos. So sorry I didn't get your name. I, I'm I'm so pissed at myself because I, I shook your hand. And I said hey, what's up? And thank you for watching my videos and all that. And Joy Scott Snyder. And then I, I left. And my fiance is like, are you okay? I'm like, what? You didn't even ask his name. I'm like, oh my god. Uh, I'm gonna go take a nap. But um, yeah. Uh, it was the best Boston Comic Con. Um, it's just funny uh, how, you know, meeting Scott Snyder is like parallel to when I met Neil Adams is Neil Adams was kind of a dick. And because of it, I, I, even though he's a fantastic artist, I just don't like, I don't care for his work anymore. But Scott Snyder was such an amazing, genuine guy. When you watch him on like videos or podcasts and he's talking how genuine he is and how he talks about how humble he is, that is him. That is 100% him. And uh, it's not an act, and he's really like that, and it just makes me love him more. He's probably pound for pound my favorite writer right now, and that has only helped boost that that idea, that image. Um, I only bought one thing there, and there was this shirt, and it's Princess Peach and Princess Daisy, and it says two girls, one up. A lot of you guys might get that. Some of you might not, but I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, there was a lot of uh, funny stuff there. My comic store was there, comically speaking. Um, and he, he did a fantastic job there. He sold a lot of comics. He, he had some great deals, like the Marvel Masterwork car covers, buy one, get two free. It's ridiculously good, but uh, um, yeah. But it was a great con. I got to meet uh, one of my favorite writers, or if not my favorite writer, Scott Snyder. Uh, and I got all the comics I wanted signed by him. Um, I got to meet George Perez, an icon, a superstar, a legendary drawer and writer also. And I got stuff signed by him. I got to meet Tony Daniel, which is a fantastic artist. I uh, really love his stuff. Got stuff signed by him. And um, the only the only negative is I didn't get to meet Brian Azzarello. But, you know, the a different con for a different time and you know eventually I'll, I'll get to meet him but i'm gonna frame this stuff this is like awesome and it was a great con it was really was so uh if you went to boston comic con uh tell me your story did you like it did you enjoy it what did you think uh with that said i'm, I'm gonna end this video here this is andrew saying peace out for now